Good morning. I am the Reverend Glenn Farley of the Sedona Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. This morning I want to begin by lighting our chalice and then share some updates and announcements and a brief reflection. With the kindling of this flame, we reaffirm our commitment to accept life's gifts with grace and gratitude, to use them to bless the world in the spirit of love. Well, here we are, entering our sixth week of staying at home. The curve is nowhere near flattening in the United States. Testing is still very limited and very slow. Locally at the Verde Valley Medical Center, there were about half a dozen COVID-19 cases at the end of this week. There are many more at Flagstaff Medical Center. It varies, but it's been consistently over 40 COVID-19 patients. The ICU is very close to capacity, and many patients are being uh, flown there from the Navajo Nation. My heart goes out to those who have lost loved ones and those who are ill. I feel deep gratitude for the essential workers who are putting themselves at high risk to be of service to all of us. My heart also goes out to those who are newly unemployed or whose work dried up or are not allowed to work. Sedona UU Fellowship President Chris Seeholzer sent out a detailed report this past Friday, April 17th, and I want to reiterate how thankful I am to all of you for staying safe and finding ways to reach out and support each other and stay connected safely. Towards that end, SUF member Barbara Warren has been doing some reading and reflecting on ways we can stay connected safely. Since it is springtime, last week was Easter, this upcoming week is Earth Day, Barbara has some flowers she's expecting to fully bloom this week. She thought perhaps we can share our blooming plants with each other. The details are in the email and in Barbara's own, own words um, describes it, but feel free to take a photo of any plants you have in your home or yard with a description or background story and email them to SedonaUU at gmail.com and I will compile them and share them. Also, in light of staying connected, we are in the midst of our pledge drive. We realize that our fiscal 2021 pledge form that was mailed out last month had an incorrect zip code on it for the return address. So the correct mailing address with the correct zip code is in this uh, email. The correct zip code is Cornville, Arizona 86325. That's our Treasurer uh, Tracy Young's uh, mailing address. So as of this past Friday, April 17th, we only had about half of the expected pledges submitted. We're hoping for a vibrant fellowship year next year and we need everyone to pledge generously to accomplish that. So please do so. A reflection I wanna share this morning is uh, in reference to an article in the New Yorker um, that came out just this past week, April 14th, I found it very enlightening and very moving and I wanted to reflect on it uh, with you all just a bit. The title of the article was The Plight of a Hospital Chaplain During the Coronavirus Pandemic. The subtitle, How Do You Comfort the Suffering When You're Not Allowed in the Room? by the reporter Elizabeth Barber. For many of us, we are probably feeling stuck at home, much more than we're used to. Our background anxiety is probably heightened. Am I gonna get sick? 
If I do, what are my chances? Are my loved ones safe? Is my income reliable? If so, for how long? Where can I find a face mask? Then there's those that work in hospitals. They are quite legitimately terrified. The likelihood of them getting COVID-19 is extremely high. They're working with highly contagious patients, are very distraught family members, and in the midst of all that, they are having a real lack of supplies. A UU ministerial colleague who I know personally is a hospital chaplain back in New York City. She's in a posi position of some prestige. She's the director of spiritual care at Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. In this role, she leads a team of eight chaplains and four resident chaplains. It's uh, an 1,100 bed hospital, it's huge. And last week they had 600 COVID-19 patients. She posted this New, York, New Yorker article I mentioned uh, this week on social media. In the article, the reporter shadows one of her staff chaplains at Mount Sinai Hospital. I learned from the article actually that my friend is at home now, self-quarantining, suspected of having COVID-19. And her husband, an Episcopal priest, is also a chaplain, has stepped in in her absence to serve as the acting director of spiritual care at Mount Sinai Hospital. So in the article, the reporter is shadowing a 26-year-old Presbyterian woman who's expected to be ordained later this year. The chaplain tells the reporter that she views her job as to accompany the patients and their families. Her priority is to listen, and her goal is to help people make meaning of their circumstances. Now, how can she accomplish this if she cannot enter the room of COVID-19 patients? So she starts by standing at the patient's door. In her first encounter of the day, she calls a family member of the patient on her cell phone, puts the phone on speaker, and holds it up at the door so the family member can speak comforting words to the intubated Catholic woman patient who doesn't speak English. Then the chaplain gives a rosary and puts it in a plastic bag and gives it to the nurse so she can place it with the patient by the bedside at the family's request. Next up, she speaks on the phone to a, with a Pentecostal Christian patient with COVID-19. She essentially hears his confession, his belief that God is punishing him for his sinful behavior for which he cannot forgive himself. Later, a nurse asks her, where is God in all this? Then, a group of doctors call her upset. They have a COVID-19 patient who is close to death, but no family members have yet been located. They ask her to go to his door and say a prayer for that patient. All of this before her lunch break on a Friday. She is in the thick of it, life, death, sickness, health, guilt, shame, fear, heaven, and hell. I've shared before that I did my required chaplaincy in Hawaii in my road to be a Unitarian Universalist minister. And I really, really was profoundly shaped by that experience. So reading this article was familiar to me. I, I've had these various conversations in my time of chaplaincy but never in that level of intensity in one morning and one weekday. In my chaplaincy, it was well spaced out. But what New York has gone through this past month and in other cities and states across the country, it's full-on intensity of pandemic and 
contagious sickness and death. Some people I've read are predicting our entire health care providers, doctors, nurses, CNAs, respiratory therapists, chaplains, and everyone else in the health care um, service industry are going to have post-traumatic stress disorder. Is that an extreme p prediction? I don't know. I don't know how long a healthy human can stay with that level of intensity, especially if one isn't feeling supported by their administrators and political leaders. In the article, um, I was quite impressed with the deep spiritual maturity of this young chaplain and how she really did accompany, listen, and help make meaning in each of her encounters with patients patients, families, and hospital staff, all while practicing appropriate physical distancing. Of course, I included a link to the article, and I encourage you to read it to see what it is like in a 1,100-bed hospital in Manhattan as we speak. We need to support those who are supporting all of us. Stay home and stay safe. May you be blessed.